Hi all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're looking at the AP Statistics, 2019 AP Statistics Free Response Question, number six. As usual, uh, if I have any mistakes in the video, I'll put it in the description below. And um, I also have links to PDF, my own PDF solutions in the description below, which will be useful until the actual solutions come out in a couple months. So Emma is moving to a large city and investigating typical monthly rental prices available one-bedroom apartments. She obtained a random sample of rental prices for 50 one-bedroom apartments taken from a website where people voluntarily list available apartments. To describe the population for which it is appropriate for Emma to generalize the results from her sample. Well, um, the population would be one-bedroom apartments because that's what she's restricted to. but not just any one bedroom apartment um, that is listed on this website. By the way, which was voluntarily, voluntarily listed, by the way, voluntarily listed on this website. Okay, uh, that's the whole population. So she's grabbing from one bedroom apartments from this list. It's not one bedroom apartments of the entire city. It doesn't include the ones that are involuntary listed. So you, you want to be very specific here. You want to, It's only the one bedroom apartments that they were voluntarily listed on this particular website. That's the only generalization she can make about it. Okay, um, describe the population for which is, uh, sorry, uh, B. Uh, Emma wants to estimate the typical rental price of a one bedroom apartment in the city. Based on the distribution shown, what is the advantage of using a mean rather than the median as the estimate of their uh, typical rental price? Um, let's see. Um, because it is right skewed, um, the mean will be inflated. Not just right skewed, but right skewed with outliers. The mean will be inflated more so because of that. Like these values up here, I'm gonna drive the mean much higher on average. And that's gonna give her an unreasonable expectation of what she should list, uh, what she should expect to pay because these are kind of extreme values. They're not really like what she would, you know, be expected to pay. These are very high end one bedroom locations. So the median will be less resistant um, to the outliers. Median is more resistant to the outliers. And that's basically why you would say that that's better. Okay, so instead of using the sample median as a point estimate for the population median, Emma wants to use an interval estimate. However, computing an interval estimate requires knowing the sampling distribution of the sample medium sample size 50. Emma has one point, her sample median, in that sampling distribution. Using information about rental prices that are available on the website, describe how someone could develop a theoretical sampling distribution of the sample median for sample sizes of size 50. Okay, so what you would do is you would just randomly select 50 from that website over and over and over and calculate the median. So you would repeatedly um, randomly select 50, one be 50 apartments and calculate the median. Sorry, it's running off the screen a little bit there because of the calculator. Okay, um, because Emma does not have the resource to develop a theoretical sampling distribution, she estimates the sampling distribution of the sample median using a process called bootstrapping. In the bootstrapping process, a computer program performs the following steps. Take a random sample, replacement, size 50 from the original sample, calculate and record the median of the sample, repeat the process to obtain 15,000 medians. Emma ran the bootstrap process in the following frequency table as the bootstrap distribution showing her results of generating 15,000 mediums. The bootstrap distribution provides an approximate sampling distribution of the median. Confidence for the median can be constructed using percentage of the values in the middle of the bootstrap distribution. Use the frequency table to find the following value of the fifth percentile. So fifth per percentile would be 5% of 15,000. And that is 0.5%. Seven fifty. 
So we would look at the bottom 750 number of units, like the 750th one. That would be the fifth, per fifth percentile. So if I look at these sum on the bottom ones, because I have this frequency, it doesn't get up to about 700 till about this point right here, right? And so we would say the fifth percentile is 2,500. And then the 95th percentile is the top 750. It's the highest 750 values. And so we would say, well, if I add up, cumulatively add up to about 750, it doesn't show up to about here. So this would be 2950. Now find the percentage of the bootstrap medians in the table that are equal to or between the values found in part D. So it's not actually equal 90th percentile, 90%. Because like remember, because like the 750th happened to be in there, but you know we actually have to add up all the ones. Technically, the percentage would be all of these. Including this one, because it says uh, equal to or between. So I, I would I would add up all those values, and that's kind of a lot of calculations. I actually decided to add up all these other ones because I know there's a total of 15,000. So if I add these and add these it would be 15,000 minus this sum here and um, 1 plus 13 okay that would be kind of tedious for you to watch me do uh, I did the calculation before so I did 1 15,000 minus 408 I think this side was about 408 and then this side I got about um, 188 and so the total number in this region that's, that, 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 that does include that is 14,404. And so the percentage would be 14,404 divided by 15,000. And that would give you um, 0.96, uh, 96%. Okay, and then use the values in Part D to construct a interpreted confidence interval for the median rental price. Um, uh, so we would say that um, we're 96% confident that the true mean, the true median is between 2,500 a month and 29.50 a month. Okay, and that wraps that up. So let me know how you did on the questions, um, and let me know if you saw any mistakes or have any questions. And I'll see you next time.